Chapter 4 The First Fight The First Level For a moment, the silent darkness persisted. As he waited, Krynan tried to replay the conversations he'd had with Sage and Lucas in his mind, but it all sounded like gibberish to him. The only words that Krynan had truly understood after listening to the system and speaking with Sage and Lucas were sword, kill, and vagina. He had no interest in playing any games or allowing the numbers of his avatar information sheet to have any bearing on his life. Krynan did not like numbers or math or logic. He liked being left alone and fighting. Krynan thought of the fights he had taken part in in his short life. He'd fought in the Kamloshan Civil War only seven years prior and participated in pushing back a marauder assault on the village of Empire near his base. He'd fought and killed pirates, ambushed Govian troops and encampments, and had even once saved a girl from being kidnapped by slave traders. Faces of the dead flashed through Krynan's mind, and a sobering realization overcame him. He was in the hells, and so were all the non-Govians he had ever killed. The thought of any of them binding him caused him to shudder. They would really be pissed. He took a breath and, seemingly out of nowhere, became disoriented. An orange flickering light began to penetrate the darkness, and Krynan realized he was heading back to the hells. It couldn't have come any quicker. He was ready to get out of there. The light faded in and out, throbbing for a moment before Krynan's vision returned to black. The disorientation grew heavier, and he could hold his eyes open no longer. Within moments, they closed, and Krynan fell unconscious. When Krynan came to, he found himself naked once again and laying on a stone altar. He immediately sat up straight and was able to see that he lay atop a large hill composed of the same red ground that his bones had settled in earlier. Above him was only blackness, and the fires on the ground raged as far as he could see. He reached up and cupped his face in his hands, groaning at the sight of it all. He was grateful that he wasn't suspended in the thick, sensationless darkness any more, but being back in the hells was little comfort. The altar Krynan sat upon was cold and smooth. He absently ran a finger across the surface, noting that it felt like marble. Looking down at it, he saw that it was just a polished gray stone. His eyes scanned the intricate designs on the borders, and he considered what the altar could have possibly been used for. His slight knowledge of altars told him that anyone sitting on top of one was not in a particularly good position— So he threw his bare legs over the side and hopped off. The red dirt on the ground beneath him was coarse like sand and filled the cracks between his toes. It would have been a decent enough feeling had the dirt been cool, but the dirt was hot and disturbing it sent a putrid brimstone smell wafting up into his nostrils. Krynan wrinkled up his nose and fanned the air in front of him as he stood. The little warrior awakens. A seductive voice softly whispered from somewhere close by. The sound was jarring and caused Krynan to hurry away from the altar. He looked around frantically, searching for the sultry voice's owner. After a moment, he spotted something in the shadows ahead. He could vaguely make out the curves of a heavily accentuated female form in the shadows and took a cautious step away from her. A demonic-sounding giggle ensued, and a set of glowing violet eyes suddenly pierced the darkness that surrounded her. Krynan's breath turned heavy, and he backed further away, searching for a way to escape. He took his gaze off his enemy for a moment, and when he looked back, the glowing eyes were no longer there. Shit! He cursed. As he jerked his head around, he felt something slam into his body, pinning him to the altar— Krynan struggled to break free from her and watched in terror as she overpowered him. Two purple-skinned hands reached out and dug their long black nails into Krynan's wrist as the succubus straddled him and pinned him against the altar. The demon, a tall, long-legged, purple-skinned and black-haired female, smiled as she hovered above him and innocently shrugged her shoulders. 
Her large, naked breasts bounced as she gyrated her hips on top of him, and she leaned forward, pushing her tits into Crinan's face. Oh, hey, baby, the demoness moaned. She glazed her lips with the black viscous saliva that slowly dripped from her forked tongue. Crinan gasped and immediately looked away, the abundant chest cleavage pressing hard against his face. He was both petrified and mildly aroused. Her thick thighs squeezed him in place and she groaned against his crotch, leaning down closer and dragging her barbed tongue across the naked flesh of his chest. Pieces of skin tore free and Crinan gasped in pain. Oh no, does it hurt? The succubus moaned with a tone of false innocence as she pressed her plump lips against his ear. I can make it feel better, baby boy. No! Crinan snapped. He could feel his exposed self growing hard as the succubus dragged herself over him. He moved his head back and forth frantically, searching for any kind of way out. He was not about to endure whatever the creature demanded from him. This situation was well beyond his comfort zone, and he was prepared to get out of it by any means necessary. And then he spotted it, the hilt of a sword peeking up from the right side of the altar. Crinan remembered what Sage had told him. Take the sword and kill the succubus. Give it to me. The succubus ordered as she positioned herself to accept Crinan's cock. Come on, baby. You've been a bad, bad boy. Give mommy what she came here for. Let go, damn it! Crinan shouted as he finally ripped his hand free. The succubus's claw left deep, bloody gashes in his skin, and Crinan reached out and grabbed the handle of the sword. The succubus rolled off him, and a fine black mist engulfed her hands. She smiled wickedly, and Crinan got to his feet on the opposite side of the altar. Item acquired. Iron short sword. One-handed weapon. Grants lethal combat capabilities to Avatar. Damage output modifier. None. Description. A basic weapon with a lethal edge. The short sword can be found on the hip of any of our fine men and women on the front lines. Through the years, the swinging of these blades has provided more and more lands with Dura Anna's favor and helped the world see the true way that Govia provides. Weapon equipped to weapon slot one. You want it? The succubus asked, sensually touching and swaying her body in front of him. It's either this or eternal torture. Come on, baby. Be my toy. Enjoy your time here. Let me have my fun. She moaned as she took a step forward and crawled onto the altar. The black mist on her hand seemed to spread over the stone and begin to rise up above her. Come on. Bring that yummy body over here to mommy. Crinan grimaced, curling his upper lip and gripped his sword tighter. Whatever weird fantasy this creature was trying to force upon him, he didn't want any part of it. Or so he told himself. He looked down and saw that he was still erect and felt mildly embarrassed, but he didn't linger. He took a step forward, and the succubus smiled. You can't hurt me with that, baby. The succubus laughed, nodding at his sword. You can't hurt me at all. You can only give me pleasure. That's all you prisoners can do. Crinan held his weapon threateningly and snarled at the creature before him. She did not respond how he wanted. Instead, the succubus writhed in heat like a cat, gyrating her hips against the smooth stone of the altar. Crinan couldn't believe what he was seeing. Sure, it was sexy in a way, but he knew nothing good could come of this. He wasn't going to give in no matter what little Crinan demanded. Come on. The succubus snapped, finally flipping onto all fours. She crawled toward him a few steps and crooked one of her gnarly nailed fingers, beckoning him over. This is my time, prisoner. You do as I say. Fuck off, Crinan snapped back. Come any closer and you're dead. The succubus stopped crawling and lowered her head to the altar as she suddenly started laughing in response. Stupid newbie. The succubus giggled. 
Hard to get is so ten years ago. The succubus looked up and then jumped to her feet. The black mist culminated around her hands again and she held them out in a threatening manner. Krynan kept a sharp eye on her. Oh no. She feigned concern as the mist shot out and knocked Krynan's feet from under him. He crashed to the ground, landing on his back. Dust flew in all directions around him and he growled. Looks like you fell down. Let mommy come and help you. Quit with the weird ass mommy shit, Krynan yelled. He rolled backwards and then got to his feet in just enough time for the mist to slam into his chest. He stumbled back again, but kept his balance. It's creepy, Krynan groaned. That's the idea, honey, the succubus declared as she hopped off the altar. She took a few steps forward and bit her lower lip. Are you really not going to fuck me? She asked with a whiny voice. No, Krynan clapped back. I don't even fucking know you. Such a waste. The succubus sighed. I guess I'll just have to eat you then. Why do you all eat each other here? Krynan yelled. The dark mist surrounded him and he could feel whatever force was behind it lift his feet off the ground. The succubus extended a clenched fist as she took slow, methodical steps toward him. Disappointment can be the greatest teaching tool. The demoness purred. She spoke with a teasing yet mildly impatient tone. Come, oh mighty warrior, try your best. Thrust that little sword inside me. Make me scream. She stepped forward, having moved her arms out perpendicular to her body. She raised her chin confidently and slowly walked, moving one bare purple foot in front of the other as if she were walking a straight line. Big bad soldier. The succubus taunted as she neared. About to be bested by a little dainty lady like me? She flashed a smile, showing off her sharp pointed teeth, and Krynan watched her forked tongue reach up and lick her lips. I am so looking forward to watching your face when you realize you can do nothing. You can't protect yourself, boy. You can only... Krynan snarled and lunged powerfully. The tip of his sword pierced the demoness's sternum and emerged out her back. Black, tar-like blood streamed down his hands and onto his forearms, and he pushed his weapon deeper, down to the hilt. Without a word, he locked eyes with the demoness. What? Her tone was shocked, and a look of fear spread over her face. How can it be? Must be magic, Krynan sneered. He didn't waste any more time. With a strength he hadn't known in life, he ripped his sword upward, lifting the succubus off the ground and tearing through her flesh and bone. With one final pull, the blade cut through the final bit of her sternum, severed her collarbone, and emerged out the right side of her neck. Krynan let the weapon drop to his side, and the demoness fell to the ground, twitching. Krynan's naked body was covered in black blood, and he panted as he slowly walked over to the side of the succubus's body. She stared up at him fearfully, a stream of the dark ichor leaking from her mouth. Kneeling, he wrinkled up his face and stared at the creature. How'd I do? He whispered as he held the edge of his blade against her throat. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Weakly. The demoness's head trembled as if she were trying to shake it in objection. <gasps> Who? She choked, blood bubbling from the sides of her torn neck. Who? Shut up! Krynan stood and drove the tip of his weapon through her eye. More of the black blood gushed out and the succubus released a light gasp. She arched her back one final time and then went limp on the ground. Player, Gadriel Janmore, executed. Player rank, 1,887,621,113. Congratulations, Pretty Kitty 6969420. You have advanced in ranking. Previous rank, 2,114,712,296.
New rank, 2 billion, 1 million, 166,704. Previous percentile, 100%. New percentile, 95%. New percentile achieved. Congratulations, you are showing your true power. Your buffs have been modified. Cosmetic items unlocked. See your wardrobe for more details. Your turn, bitch, Karnan whispered as he kicked the corpse in the ribs. He snorted at the dead demon and turned away. The fields of fire burned endlessly before him. He watched bodies fall from the sky. He heard the screams of the damned and the cries of glee of those who pursued them. Krynan didn't know exactly what to do, but he knew he could now fight. With that knowledge, he took a step forward.